So for problem number one, it says a one kilogram object is thrown horizontally. Okay, so what does horizontally mean? This is from side to side. Horizontal. Oops, I think I spelled it wrong. Horizontal. Okay, it's the opposite of vertical. Okay. So you gotta know what horizontally means. A one kilogram object is thrown horizontally. Okay, so let's just do that. Let's just draw that. Let's have the ground and let's have this object some height h above the ground. We'll just make it a yellow ball. So this is the, the mass of this thing is one kilogram. Okay, so then a two kilogram object is dropped from vertically at the same instance and from the same point above the ground. Okay, so same H. So it's gonna be another ball, we'll put it right here. Okay, and it's at the same height H above the ground. Okay, so look what it says. The one kilogram object was thrown horizontally. Okay, and then the two kilogram object is thrown, or excuse me, dropped, dropped is the word, dropped vertically so it's going to this one's going to drop vertically downwards so if friction is neglected and by that they mean there's no air fr friction at any given point both objects will have the same so will they have the same kinetic energy momentum total velocity or height okay so let's look at each of these and see which one is correct well, first of all, you and I have not talked about kinetic energy at all. Okay, so what was the first one? Kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is one half mv squared. Now you're not supposed to know that. One thing you are supposed to know is take a look at the take a look at the masses. The mass of this was one kilogram. The mass of this object was two kilograms. So the the kinetic energy of this uh, ball will be actually twice as much because of that mass um, inside of the kinetic um, energy. So the kinetic energy of this purple ball will be twice as much as the kinetic energy for this one. So it's not a plus we never even talked about kinetic energy so you, you shouldn't really talk about it. If you don't know it, don't choose it, right? Um, let's look at momentum. Let's look at V. So what is momentum? It's actually symbol is the symbol is P and it's mass times velocity. So again, we didn't talk about this, so I would not choose it. You don't even know what momentum is. You're not supposed to know what momentum is in uh, seventh grade, but I'm telling you what it is now. It's the mass times the velocity. Now notice again, it's got that mass in there. So the momentum of this ball will actually be twice as much as uh, the yellow ball. So it's not B. Let's look at C. Let's look at total velocity. Now, if it said total speed, it would be true. But total velocity, total velocity implies speed with a direction. Okay. So that's what velocity is. And it turns out that the velocity of this ball ha uh, is horizontal to start with and vertical to start with on the other ball. So the total velocity of these two things will not be the same. The speed will be the same, however, because they're both accelerating uh, at the same height. Okay, that's this one would be very difficult to see uh, for someone, uh, for most of you guys, because you need to know the difference between velocity and speed. I told you in seventh grade, it's basically the same thing, and it basically is. It's just that velocity has, uh, velocity is a speed with a direction. And since this one starts horizontally, it, it automatically has a different velocity in that it has a different direction of its speed. 
The speed, however, is the same for these two things because they're accelerating at the same rate. Their acceleration is uh, g, which is uh, assuming they're on the planet Earth. We don't really know if they're on the planet Earth or not. It would be 10 meters per second squared. So it's not total velocity. So it's actually d. Okay, d is the answer. Okay, d is total height. or excuse me, just height. So at any moment along its course, let's make, um, let's make a graph here of time. We'll make this zero seconds, and uh, we'll put this in seconds. Zero seconds, one second, two second, three second. Let's just say it hits the ground at four seconds. And I hope you're writing this down with me. Because there's really no point to just sitting there watching this. You need to be doing it with me. Okay, so let me show you what the what the trajectory of this ball is going to look like. It was thrown horizontally. So what does that look like? Well, it's going to have a lot of uh, horizontal velocity. But it's actually going to pick up some vertical velocity. And over time going to pick up almost an equal amount of vertical velocity before it just hits the ground. Okay. Now, remember that these two things are under the ex same acceleration. They're under the same acceleration g for gravity. Okay. So that means for every second that passes, their velocity is increasing 10 meters per second. That's what an acceleration of 10 meters per second squared means. It means after, uh, and I'll put here velocity, velocity after, or no, I'll put velocity change per second. Velocity per second increases 10 meters per second. So here the yellow ball is going zero, right? And then in the vertical direction, the velocity is 10 meters per second squared, then 20 meters per second squared, then 30, and then 40, right? So same thing here. They're both accelerating at the same rate. We did this experiment in class. When you drop two objects at different masses from the same height, they will always hit the ground at the same time, assuming you drop them from the same height, because they're both accelerating at the same rate of 10 meters per second squared. So that was the whole point of this. Um, that was the whole point of this uh, this problem. So the answer is D. Let's take a look at this next problem here. Uh, let's take a look at this picture. It says the picture below shows a student pulling on a rope that is attached to a wall. Uh, I'm not sure why it says a wall right there, but okay. So there's some student and he's pushing or he's pulling on this um, on this uh, looks to be a uh, a, you know, a, a force measurement device. Now, this might look a little confusing, but the face is facing upwards. Okay, and then this is just zooming in so you can, you can see it from, you know, from up here if this was your eye. Okay, so you're looking, this view is looking down on it. I know it looks a little weird. But it says, which statement correctly describes the amount of force applied by the wall? Okay, so this thing is applied to the wall. It's attached to the wall, and he's pulling back on it. Which statement correctly describes the amount of force applied by the wall as the student continues to apply a 250 Newton force? All right, okay, so we can... We can... Um, draw this right and have a guy pulling on a rope and then uh, it connected to a wall so you know that this guy is pulling back he's pulling back with a 250 newton force okay so it's asking how much force does the wall need to apply right which statement correctly describes the amount of force applied by the wall Okay, so this, this force is question mark. Now I want you to notice something, okay? Neither of them are accelerating. Neither object is accelerating. OK, 
okay? What did we need? What, did, what, what was required in acceleration? It was Newton's second law. F is equal to m times a. The, 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 the answer lies in here. So if neither object is accelerating, then they must not be feeling a net force, okay? Otherwise, one of them would start, the other, uh, they'd both start accelerating in one direction because this, this whole thing is really this. It's really a box with one force of 250 newtons on the right, or excuse me, on the, uh, acting to the left, and another force that we don't know pulling to the right. And we know that the net force acting on this box has to be zero newtons, okay? Be, uh, and I'll put because no acceleration. Okay. So if F net, and I'll show you guys how to do this, you can probably just do it uh, looking at it. You know that, that, that this force is going to be have, have to be 250 newtons, but let's just do it mathematically so you don't have to skip any steps. We can say F net is equal to, okay, so we have to remember, what do we do when we, when we calculate a net force? We sum, up the, uh, we sum up the directions just like we've been doing in class. I always assign to the right as positive and to the left as negative. So what, is it, what are the positive forces in this diagram? Well, our only positive force is the one pointing to the right and we don't know it. Let's just call it F question mark. It's a force that we don't know. And then we have to subtract anything pointing to the right, 250 newtons. That's the, that's the guy pulling back. What was the net force? We know the net force had to be zero newtons because there's no acceleration. So this whole sum has to equal zero newtons, okay? Now all we gotta do is, uh, is solve for F question mark. So if I add 250 newtons to the other side, we're gonna get, we're gonna figure out what F question mark is. It's F question mark is equal to 250 newtons. Okay, and that makes sense. I just wanted to show you guys mathematically how you would figure it out. Okay, so let's see if our answer's in there. The first one says the wall pulls with a force of 125. That can't be right. If the wall did pull back with 125, the the the, the both the boy, the guy, and the um, and the wall would accelerate in this direction because there'd be a net force on that on that system. The wall pulls with a force of 250 newtons against the student. Ooh, that sounds right. That sounds like a check mark. Let's look, let's look at the rest though. Let's look at the rest of the of the answers. Uh, the wall exerts twice as much force as a student. Okay, so in that case, for C, let's look at B real quick. Or no, 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 let's look at A real quick. That would look like this, a box with uh, this, 125 newtons and 250 newtons. Okay, so that doesn't work. Let's look at C. C is uh, pulls with a force twice as much as a student. So. 250 times uh, 2 is 500 newtons, okay? So, it, and I'll do acceleration in purple. The box would accelerate to the left in that case. The box would accelerate to the right in that case. We know that we don't want this to accelerate. These two guys are just hanging out. The wall's not accelerating and neither is the guy. So you know this, you know the net force has to equal zero. Let's look at this one. The wall exerts no force since it's stationary. Ah, this one was probably the most tempting for anyone that doesn't truly understand force yet. The wall exerts no force because it's stationary. Well, if it exerted no force, guess what? There would be one force on, on in this diagram, and it would be the guy pulling backwards with a 250 Newton force. Notice it says stationary. The only way that this wall can stay stationary is if it pulls backwards. All right, let's check out this problem. Two students are pushing a cart as shown below. All right, it's just two guys pushing a cart in, either, in opposite directions. Their cart will move as if it was acted upon by a single force with a magnitude of, and then it gives us some, uh, some answers. Okay, so before I even look at the answers, I'm already thinking, okay, I need to draw a box I'm going to draw a force pointing to the left 
or excuse me, pointing to the right of 200 newtons. I can also have a, another force pulling to the right of 120, 150 newtons. Now notice I said pulling, why? I am actively trying to make sure that your mind is not confused. You're not confused anymore. There's no difference between a push and a pull. Okay, I don't really care what side the net forces are on, right? All I care about is the direction, of, the direction of the force. Okay, I always assign uh, positive as to the right, negative to the left, just in case we need to assign uh, a net force here. Because that's exactly, actually, it's exactly what we're doing. So there's no difference in the net force no difference in the net forces here. Doesn't matter if 150 is on the left or if it's on the right. All I care about is if it's pointing to the left, and they are. These two are pointing to the right, okay? So anyway, what are we doing here? We're calculating the net force. That's all we're doing. The cart will move as if it was acted upon by a single force. What do you think that is? It's called the net force. Okay, that's what the single, that's what they mean by single force. So let's, uh, let's do, let's just do this one. It doesn't matter. They're both going to give the same result. So I start with anything that's positive pointing to the right. That's the only one there is 200 newtons. That is the only force that's pointing to the right in this diagram. And now I need to subtract 150 newtons. Why? Because it's pointing to the left. So the net force is 50 newtons okay so that's like a box that has one force notice that this was positive right so that means it has a one it has one force arrow pointing to the right of 50 newtons so this box this these two will definitely accelerate it will accelerate to the right and you know that because this guy is pushing with 200 newtons or 50 newtons more than this guy, so they're going to accelerate uh, to the to the to the right. So let's take a look at this one. We're looking at a graph here, and it says the graph below shows the object movement. Oops, didn't mean to move that. The movement of an object, okay, at several points in time. All right. So when you see movement, what do you think? What's the word that you're thinking of when you hear of movement? You should be thinking velocity, okay? Distance over time. So when you're looking at a graph, you need to be looking at three things. You need to be looking at the title and the axes. So we've looked at the title, it says object movement. So notice that the y-axis is distance and the x-axis is time. So we definitely know that we're talking about a velocity here, distance and time. So the next one says, or the next line down, it says, what is the average speed of this object? Ah, average speed. Okay, so I'm sure this word probably threw some of you guys off, but it really didn't matter, actually. You could have just calculated this and you'd have been just fine, okay? Because it turns out this thing's going at a constant speed, okay? You know that because the slope of this line is is constant so let's first put that down let's put down that this object is going at a constant speed okay so let's let's uh let's calculate this the velocities at different points for example, let me show you something. Uh, let's first calculate the velocity between these two points, just for practice, because I'm gonna show you for illustration purposes. So what is the velocity between t is equal to uh, zero to five seconds? Okay, from this point to this point. Okay, well, we know that, we know the answer to that. We just have to uh, calculate it, right? Delta D is DF minus DI over TF minus TI. And now we just have to plug in. Remember, distance final is the Y value or the distance value at the final point. So this is equal to 10 meters 
And now we need to subtract in our formula di, that is the uh, initial distance, zero meters. Calculate tf, or not calculate, but see it, it's five seconds. And then the initial time is zero seconds. So we're left with 10 meters over five seconds, which is two meters per second. Now I guarantee you, any point along this line, you calculate in between here, you calculate them between here, you calculate them here, you calculate them there. The slope is the same throughout, and th that's what you're really calculating here. You're calculating the slope. That's what the velocity is. The velocity is a slope of a distance versus time graph. All right, so you've just calculated the slope, and it's two meters, or the velocity, which is the same thing as a slope, which is two meters per second. It'll all look a lot, all across here. So we can actually calculate the velocity here, 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 and here, and prove multiple ways that the average velocity is two meters per second. Just by knowing what the average speed means, if it's two meters per second here, or here, or here, or here, or here, and all the way along this line, it's two meters per second, then you know, um, oh, it's not two meters per second, it's actually two meters per minute, I'm sorry. Well, that doesn't matter, it's the same thing. All we have to do is change our units, right? This will go to minutes instead of seconds. No big deal. Oops, not there. Okay, two, two meters per minute. All right, well, whatever. It's the same thing. It's a velocity. If the, if the velocity all along this line is two meters per minute, okay, minutes, then you know that the average the if I picked randomly out of this, what would the average be? It's going to be two meters per minute. But let's prove that, okay? So let's take the velocity at several points. One, two, three, four. I need a darker color, don't I? Um, let me use this dark color for this. One, two, three, four, and five, okay? So let's calculate the velocity at V1. Well, it's just distance over time, it's one point. I'm only looking for one point here. So the distance was 10 meters over five seconds. What was the velocity? Oops, <laughs> I keep using seconds, I'm so used to it. Meters per minute, two meters per minute. Okay, let's calculate the velocity at V2. Well, at, at V2, it's 20 meters uh, over 10 minutes. Again, we get two meters per minute. What is V3? Well, look at the distance for the third point. It looks to me to be 30 meters over, well, let's find the time, 15 minutes. 30 divided by 15 is two, two meters per minute. What about V4? Well, the velocity at point four is 40 meters over 20 seconds. Two meters per minute. What about the velocity, uh, what about the velocity at uh, T5? Well, the velocity at T5 is 50 meters. over 25 seconds. Oops, 25 minutes. I keep doing minutes. I keep doing seconds, I mean. So that's two meters per minute. Okay, so now what the heck does the average mean? Well, if you wanna take the average of a measurement, average measurement, you need to do the sum sum of all measurements divided by the number of measurements. Okay, you need to know this actually. You should probably know how to calculate an average in seventh, in seventh grade. It's not, it's not something you shouldn't know. Okay, so let's look at the sum, let's do it. Let's do the average, in this case, the average velocity or the average speed that's what they're asking for, right? The average speed. 
So what's the average speed? Well, we need to sum up all the measurements. Well, we took five measurements, so let's sum them up. Two plus two plus two plus two plus two. Two, four, six, eight, ten. So the sum was 10 meters per minute. And then we divide that by the number of measurements. Well, we had five measurements. Okay, and what's cool is the average speed is going to be come out to what we initially figured out, two meters per minute. Okay, so there are many ways to answer this question. Um, I don't let don't let the the word average uh, throw you off. The average just means the sum of all measurements, and if it has the same velocity throughout the entire the entire time, the average can't change. It's always two. It's always two meters per minute. All right. Okay, this one's probably pretty easy. Let's take a look. Data from an experiment are presented below. Okay, so we have some experimental data. So we have distance and we have time. So we know immediately when you hear those two words together, we know we're thinking about a velocity. So again, this is just another veloc velocity graph, okay? A distance versus time graph. How an object's distance changes as time ticks on. Notice that the units are in centimeters this time, but that's no big deal. It's still uh, still a distance. Time is in seconds now. The slope of this graph represent, represents what characteristic of this object, of an object? This, excuse me, let me read that again. The slope of the graph represents what characteristic of an object? Well, the velocity is the slope of the distance versus time graph. Okay, why is that? Or speed. Okay, so what is the, what does this mean? Well, let's make sure we know what slope is. What is the slope of any line? on a graph, it's the rise over the run, okay? The y over the x, the rise in y over the run in x. So that's basically exactly what this is because the y is distance and the x is uh, time in this case. So in the case of velocity, you have distance, the rise over run, the run, the time. Okay, in this case, it's in centimeters per second. So look at the answers. Displacement's not true. Displacement is actually, remember, the total uh, or the total distance traveled, including direction. So if I traveled 100 meters in this direction and then I turned right around and traveled 100 meters right back, my total, my total distance, I'll just say TD, was 200 meters but my displacement would be zero meters. It's like, the, it's like the total distance traveled when you're done. So think of it this way. I travel along all this way. I go, maybe I travel all around. And then I stop right here. Okay, there's a total, total distance travel, right, all the way along this thing. And then there is a displacement, the distance between your starting and uh, ending point. So this would be your displacement. So you can see that the displacement and the total distance don't always have to be the same, but it's not displacement. It's not force. You know force is, is mass times acceleration. We don't see any masses. We don't see any accelerations here, so it can't be force. It's going to definitely be speed. It's not inertia. Okay, this is not a graph of inertia because I don't see inertia anywhere on there. Okay, and it has nothing to do with mass and acceleration. So we know that for sure that the um, graph, the slope, is showing the velocity. Okay, that's the whole point of this. So the answer is C. This next problem says, the graph below shows the distance of a student uh, shows the distance a student walks down a hall over time. Okay, so we know we have a distance and we have time. So we all automatically know that we're dealing with a velocity. 
Use the information shown on the graph to answer the following questions. Alrighty. So it says, during which time interval was the student moving the fastest? Which time interval was the student moving the fastest? Well, let me give you the easy way to do it. Okay. The velocity was the slope of the graph of a distance versus time graph, right? So if you have a graph like this, right? And let's just say we have this this distance, or excuse me, yeah, let's make this distance and this time. Let's say uh, that's a point. That's a point for a different object. That's a point for a different object. And that's a point for a different object. Just different different objects moving at different distances and different times. You know that if we had if these objects had velocities v1, v2, v3, v4, you know that v1 has a greater slope because it's very steep. So therefore the velocity is greater. So the greatest velocity would be v1, which is greater than v2, which is greater than v3, which is greater than v4. Okay, you could even have one that's down here. Right? That would be v5. That would be less than v4. Okay, so more slope, more slope on distance versus time graph equals more velocity. All right, so now we need to look at this graph. We have a section called A, we have a section called B, a section C, and a section D. We need to know, well, what, what is going to have the highest velocity? Well, look at the graph. Which line is the steepest? It looks to be this one right here. It looks to be D. But say you didn't know this and you wanted to calculate the velocities at every single interval. You could do that. And I'm sure some of you did because you probably didn't know about slope at this time. So, for example, if you wanted to calculate the velocity at A, you just have to do exactly what I've shown you before. Delta, delta D over delta T and then find it. So uh, section A, the final point was uh, 10 meters minus zero meters over five seconds minus zero seconds. So the velocity at A was two meters per second. What was the velocity at B? Well, that's this section right along here. Okay, so we've got two points. What is DF? Well, it's the distance of the final point. It was 15 meters. Okay, now we subtract the initial distance, 10 meters. Uh, what's the final time? 15 seconds. And what's the initial time? Five seconds. Okay, so now we've got um, uh, 15 minus 10, which is five meters over 15 minus 5, which is 10 seconds. So 5 over 10 is 1 over 2, right? 5 goes into 10 two times. You can reduce this thing to a fraction. So it's 1 half meter per second. And that makes sense, right? It's got less slope. It's not as steep as this line is, as A is. So it's got to have less velocity. Let's look at uh, VC, the uh, velocity in the section C. Well, everyone that's paying attention to my class will automatically know that the velocity of, of, of the object at this point is zero. Why? Because the distance isn't changing. But we can prove that. Just look at the two points. What's the distance at the final point? It's 15 meters. What's the distance at the initial point? 15 meters. What is the time at the final point? It's 25 seconds. What's the time of the initial point? It's 15 seconds. So 15 minus 15 is zero meters. 25 minus 15 is 10. Zero divided by anything is zero. So zero meters per second. Now let's look at the D, the velocity uh, in the section D. Well, we need to take the distance at um, the final point which is 30 meters and then subtract the distance at the initial point so that's uh, what is that find the initial point and then go over 15 meters 
Now what's the time here? The time is going to be really low because I know we're at a large velocity. So 30 seconds minus 25 seconds. 30 minus 15 is 15 meters. 30 minus 25 is 5. And you have 15 over 5, which is, sorry, I'll pull this down, VD is 3 meters per second. Okay. So you could have calculated either way. You could have looked at the slope and seen, okay, this is the steepest line on the distance versus time, so it has to have the highest velocity. Or you could have just cal literally calculated the, uh, the velocities at each point and realized that the velocity of, uh, of sec in section D is the greatest.